you know, with a lot going on today and tomorrow night, um, it's been a lot of debatables going on. And yeah, this is a prediction video, but one thing that is tonight, and I'm really debating on which show am I going to watch first tonight. Am I going to watch NXT TakeOver New Orleans first? Am I going to watch Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor first? Will I watch both at the same time? Will I watch one then and watch one right after that one airs? I don't know, but it's going to be a very big n night, okay? This is one of the big nights. Like I said, it's a lot of wrestling events going on this weekend. It's WrestleMania weekend. We have predictions, all that. But as we look at both Ring of Honor, Honor and um, NXT, who's the one that's going to win? By the way, this is Ring of Honor's biggest arena up to date at the Uno Lakefront Arena tonight. Uh, I believe the last bigger one they kind of had was back in Chicago when they were doing uh, Global Wars a few months ago. That's when I went to meet the Bullet Club the next day. But I am um, this 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 whole uh, this whole event is it's crazy and you know you got Mania tomorrow. But I look at this and I say who who do I think is going to be the better card? So because don't count Ring of Honor out, folks. They got a great card going on. All right. Same with NXT. Ring of Honor just has more matches, but. There are way bigger things going on. And I wanted to start off with the Ring of Honor predictions first for Supercard of Honor. As in the pre-show, we would have Kelly Klein versus Mayu Iwatani in a Wing of Women of Honor uh, Championship Tournament semifinal. And Sumi Sakai versus Tennille Dashwood, aka formerly known as Emma. And whoever wins those matches will be on the main show. Um... To be in a tournament final for the Women of Honor Championship. I think Tennille Dashwood's going to pick up the whole win. Listen, she's been on a roll ever since she's left the WWE. It was surprising to see her be released. But ever since she's gotten out, because they weren't really doing it, no one in the company anyways. Except the whole thing with Asuka in the end. But she has been a great wrestler. For, wrestler, it's just they, WWE never really utilized her. Did better with her. NXT did for a second with the evil Emma. But after that, nothing didn't really happen. But... She, some people say she has taken the Cody model and that she gets booked every weekend now and wants to win the title and defend it all over the world. So em Emma's doing really great right now on her own. I'm sorry, Tennille Dash was doing very great on her own. You know, selling merch, doing everything, just, you know, getting booked on her own. And it, it's gone good for being fresh right off of uh, WWE. So she's doing all right, and I do believe she will win the title. Uh, we also have Chucky e. T versus Jonathan Gresham. Um, it's not much to say here, but um, about that match, I'm sure it'll be a good singles match. Uh, the Briscoes versus Jay Lethal and Hiroshi Tanahashi for the Ring of Honor tag match. I actually am looking forward to this match, and I want to see what happens here. I don't know if Tanahashi or Jay Lethal or will win, but I am very interested to see them go against the Briscoes for the um, tag team championships. Because I don't really know any other tag teams right now in um, Ring of Honor. I don't know what the, the Dogs or the Bucks, but I think they already got a match going on. And, um... The, the guns, Marshy Machine Guns, but I think that that's not over for some reason. I am, but I am looking forward to that. Once again, we're going to see like, some New Japan talent on. A lot of New Japan talent on these Ring of Honor cards, which that's kind of usually is a lot. So, yeah, it's going to be Tanahashi and Lethal versus the Briscoes. I do believe the Briscoes is going to win, but I am looking forward to that match. I'm sure it will be great. Kenny King versus Silas Young in a last man standing match for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship. Uh, Kenny King just won the title back recently. I believe it's at the 16th anniversary. I don't know when Austin Aries is coming back after that title, but Silas Young um, will is pretty much now going back for it in a rematch. Uh, he I remember Silas Young the last last man standing match he did with uh, Jay Lethal, and that was great. So I, I am liking more of Silas Young more and more in the last real man gimmick, but. I feel like Kenny King may retain, but he hasn't really been over ever since he's had the title, though. And I think people kind of expect Aries to beat him quick already for some reason. Tomohiro Ishii versus Punishment Martinez. I'm sure it'll be a knockdown brawl with both of these guys. Ishii's really great, especially from endurance and takes a lot of hard hits. I like Punishment Martinez. Some people think he does too many aerial moves a lot for a big guy, but... Uh, I, I like Punisher Martinez sometimes. He, he's good, but I've had, I saw him do that botch match in um, that Manhattan Mayhem and against was a Dragon Lee, and it looked really bad. Um, next, a match which will probably be a crazy spot fest match, which I want to see now badly. Uh, SoCal Uncis Uncensored, pretty much Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky versus Flip Gordon 
and the Young Bucks. Flip Gordon, I'm liking this guy more and more often, man. And cause I saw the guy debut in New Japan against um, Hiromu Takahashi and Kushida. This guy is really great, and I'm sure he's going to do insane moves in um, insane amount of moves in this ladder match. Same with the Young Bucks Super Kick Party. I would be surprised if they do win the titles, but I don't. I'm not sure if they're gonna. I feel like SoCal and Censored is gonna retain, but hey, if Flip Gordon and the Young Bucks can do, we may have to let this guy the Bullet Club then, or um, I don't know, be it'll be his first title win or first Ring of Honor title in the company. But that is a spot fest match waiting to happen, and I'm sure the crowd will go insane over it. Hangman Page versus Kota Ibushi. Um, yeah, that's I think that's gonna be good. Kota Bush Ibushi, like the guy, really great. Like him in the Cruiserweight Classic, really liked his matches and like against Cody and others. And he already brought that Golden Lovers tag team back, so with Kenny Omega. So I am looking forward to that. I think Ibushi may pick up the win over him. And as in, the, I guess we should say double main event. Well, some say the co-main event is the Ring of Honor Championship, Dalton Castle versus Marty Scroll. I feel like Castle's going to retain. I know Marty Scroll literally had a crazy match last week with um in New Japan against Will Ospreay for the IWGP uh, Junior Heavyweight Championship, which was really great. Um, I, Ospreay still crazy landed on his head on that freaking Spanish fly move right on the apron. Very brutal to watch, but um, Mar could Marty get, get the win, though? Hold on a second. Sorry about that, but um, yeah, Marty versus Dalton Castle. Uh, that's gonna be a great match. It is, I believe, it's the co-main event. It is for the championship. I feel like Castle may retain, but hey, I'm glad uh, Marty getting a world title shot right here against um Dalton Castle. But I think that's gonna be a great match too. I am looking forward to that one also since the 16th anniversary, since that's his next opponent. So we will see how that goes, and I believe this is gonna be the main event. A match that has been building very, very long, probably since last year now, that people are looking really big. And NXT may have to watch out for this. Cody Rhodes versus Kenny Omega. This match is going to be big. Okay? I heard Cody had to get a police escort now because I don't know if he's getting death threats. I was like, are they really said the death threats to Cody over this whole feud? Like, man, people really must love Kenny Omega that much. They, and obviously, fans been trying to jump the barricade lately on Cody. I don't know why they keep doing that, which is just ridiculous. Like, wow, they really taking this feud that seriously now? But this this is going to be big. We've seen the build up, even the kind of like the. If you want to say New Japan was a go home show for it, the tag match last week with um Abushi and um, Kenny Golden Lovers versus Cody and Hangman. Since you know all four of these guys are gonna have matches tonight, this is gonna be a big one. This has been building up on being the elite and someone who the Young Bucks gonna turn on or if Cody they're gonna turn on Cody saying they can't trust this guy. Who is the Bullet Club leader? Everyone's saying Tama Tonga needs to be the Bullet Club leader, but. Will Kenny get kicked out? Will Cody get kicked out? Is Kenny still Bullet Club? Is Cody just a mutiny now over this whole thing? They can't have them in the same room with each other. I guess during a lot of these being the elite segments. This has been going on since... You can go all the way up to the new beginning of Sapporo. To Wrestle Kingdom. To New Year's Dash. To even We go all the way back to the G1 um, USA thing back then. When Cody was fighting against Okada for the title. And... They just trying to throw the, t the towel for him and the towel in for um, Cody Kenny and you know they just this has been building up for a very very long time. Cody, who has proven himself to be a literally now a dastardly heel, has been great. You know, the guy buried Disco Inferno on Twitter the other day too. That was kind of crazy. Some people may agree with him, some may not. But Cody has made a very big name for himself ever since he left WWE right now at this time and. I still didn't understand why he did the blonde hair thing. I don't, I don't know if he was trying to... I, I'm not saying he's trying to be like dusty or anything, but... This whole Kenny versus Cody thing has been great, and I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to this match and expect a lot of 
high expectations from this. So, it's, that's a really great card. Moving now over to NXT TakeOver New Orleans. Uh, five matches we had right now. Um, pretty much Smoothie King Center. Um, the match, I would say, has been built up the most. That has been built up for a very long time now. And I don't know if this will be the payoff for it. It will be Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa in a unsanctioned match. If Gargano wins, he will be reinstated to NXT. If Ciampa loses, I'm sorry, if Ciampa wins, Gargano will be banned from NXT. I want to go with Gargano on this one. I don't know if he's really going to get called up to the main roster after this, but I feel like he really has to get that pay big payback win on Tommaso through the many months of the DIY breaking up and him getting hit in the back multiple times with a, a crutch because we yeah, have remember Tommaso Ciampa has been hurt for a while but he's finally back and he hasn't said anything and they have spread it, this feud out for a long time now we have put this come on he even put it on YouTube where Gargano's trying to attack Ciampa at his house and at his car and at the performance center Many times, like Gargano wants to get him coming back in NXT after he was banned after losing to Andrade Cien Almas and probably a match of the year uh, candidate. I'm just still surprised he didn't win the title at the time, but I think Gargano is really going to pick up the win on this one. But I wouldn't be surprised if this would be probably a match of the night. This is probably one of the best built matches they have right now. So that's going to really go down. Really going to be big. Um, next for the new NXT North American Championship, I saw the title after Triple H unveiled it. Kind of old school. Doesn't have a giant W on it. It's kind of got like the North America, like just like you know, flag of it of America on like you know, North American flag right at smack dab at the middle of the title. So it's it's really um. It's interesting looking belt. Remind me of an NWA title for some reason, but it's it's very interesting. I'm surprised they're really making up a mid card version, a mid card for this um, North American Championship. But this is a tough one to decide who's going to win. You have the debut of Ricochet, which I'm sure he's going to do a lot of insane stuff in th that match. Debut of EC3, who fresh off of Impact. Velveteen Dream, super over. Lars Sullivan, still new, but he's getting big. Killian Dane, great. And Adam Cole, baby. This is a tough one. I don't think EC3 or Ricochet. I'd be surprised if they win, but it's their debut. I want to say Cole so they can still get this whole Undisputed Era thing over, maybe. If he has a title, but we're getting into the tag one in a minute. Um, Dream, I, would, I wouldn't mind a Dream one, too. The guy's just hoping people love him at these takeovers. Um, Dane is good, Sullivan, uh, it's getting better, I'm liking that guy more and more, uh, getting better though, it's just a lot of short matches he's had at the time, so this is a tough one, I'm, I'm probably going to side with Cole maybe, because they're trying to get this whole Undisputed Era thing that over, so I may have to side with him, and then um, he may have to do double duty tonight, or Kyle O'Reilly's going in on his nose, Bobby Fish is hurt, I believe his, I was a torn ACL if I know, yeah, his knee is hurt, so he's not going to be in this tag team match tonight. This triple threat tag team for the titles and the Dusty Rhodes Classic Championship. Because you have the Undisputed Era, which may be Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Versus the Authors of Pain. Versus Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne, a UK champion. I'm really going to say either the Era is going to win or maybe Strong and Dunne. But I think Authors of Pain, this may be their last one before they're on their way out the door. Because I think they're going to get called up to the main roster after this. I think this is... They're probably going to take the pin and they're going to go to the main. Because I think they've been in NXT long enough. They've been the champions. They've already won the Dusty Rhodes Classic Trophy. Um, I Yeah, I, I, I think they're on their way up after this. I think they're going to show up on Raw the next on Monday night after Mania. Or they will show up on SmackDown um, after Mania. So... I'm probably going to go with the Undisputed Era, depending if Adam Cole does double duty or Kyle O'Reilly goes on his own. On his own. Uh, Roger Strong, Pete Dunne. I'd be surprised if they win. Pete, Roger Strong, this guy is everywhere, but uh, Triple H likes him a lot. Come on, this guy, I've seen just so many title shots from an NXT title shot, a UK title shot, I guess that's still going. This guy's in the, the, that whole 205 Live thing recently tournament. So, Strong is everywhere right now. But uh, Triple H likes him a lot. 
But um, it's either the era I think it's gonna win or Red Snap. I honestly I don't even call it Undisputed Era when it's just Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. I still look at them as Red Dragon for some reason. But I I think Cole and Riley, if Cole's in the match, will go on to win. Ember Moon versus Shania but Baszler. Baszler's still kind of green. I'd be surprised if Ember Moon lost unless they're really gonna call her up to the main roster after this. I'm 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 that. I'm not sure. I want to say Moon, but Moon Earth was the, the last takeover. She had a roll up victory. But I'd be surprised if she did lose the title and, you know, maybe go to the main roster after this. I'm not really sure, but we'll just have to find out and see with um, Ember Moon and um, Shania Blazer. But I'm just going to say Moon right now. Uh, in the main event, we have Andrade Cien Almas versus Aleister Black for the NXT Championship. Black's winning. Uh, Black's got him. I'm sorry. He's winning the title. I like Almas. He is an Ingo Benade. Los Ingo Benades. <laughs> Not de Japon, but he is part of that, was originally part of that group. Some people think that, and I'm, don't even remember, the, the match with Gargano was great. Match with the Akane. Because Almas has had a very rough time in NXT. First, he looked like a Chippendale dancer bringing him in. And I don't know why they ever took the mask off him. Wasn't getting over at all. And then they gave him Zelina Vega, which has at least elevated him. And then out of nowhere, he just won the title against um, against Drew Galloway. Some people think they don't have nothing on for the main roster after this. Because if he loses the title, will he be going to the main roster? Because I, I really believe Aleister Black is going to win the title right here. I really do believe that. He's walking away with that championship tonight. So, it, it's five matches. But like I said, both... NXT and Ring of Honor has some very strong cards on paper. They really do. The cards look really strong, and it's going to be a tough one to decide. Which one will I watch tonight? I don't know. But we will find out and see. And as we move on to WrestleMania predictions, um, it's a lot to say from this. A lot of matches. You've probably heard my opinions in many videos now or reviews of different shows, what I feel about half these matches. And we'll start with the kickoff show, a match that should be on the main show because of what they've done recently. And have tried to revive 205 is Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, I think this match is going to be great. I still think it should be on the main show. But this match, I don't know if it's going to steal the whole show, but I am looking way forward to this match. It is big. It's, you know, ending off in the tournament. They've really done a good job of, you know... Revitalizing 205 Live, so I think Cedric's got to walk away with the window. I like Ali, and I know he's from Chicago, he's from where I'm from, but Cedric, man, I feel like he he's got to get the win. It's been it's been far too long. This guy needs to be the champion. He really does. Okay, it's, he he should have been champion a while ago. He probably should have beat Enzo already for it, but I think he's gonna get the title after this. Hmm. Women's Battle Royale, even though everybody says the trophy looks like a vagina and what, um, the championship, not the title, the trophy don't even look that good, it looks like a $5 thing from Walmart, the New Japan trophies look better anyways than whatever WWE has, especially with the Andre and this, this Walmart-like trophy here, I, I think the only people they really may care about is maybe Sasha and Bailey since they have a feud and we don't know which one is heel. And then there's other people in there like the Riot Squad, um, Absolution, Becky, Naomi, Mickey James, Lana and others, Natalia. Listen, all I know is this a whole bunch of women, most of the women on Raw, SmackDown, and NXT will be in this whole battle royale. Listen, it's, this isn't going to gain anybody anything. This is just to get all the women on the card, just whatever. I would like to see Becky win because she needs a win, a big win if you ask me. But I feel like it's going to come down between Sasha and Bailey since they have some type of feud going on. Everyone else, they ain't really got nothing going on right now. Absolution don't really care. Riot Squad, whatever. I don't know, man. It's just whatever with this match. Same with the Andre the Giant Battle Royal Trophy. You know, we don't even know everybody in it, but you got Kane, Ziggler, <laughs> Ziggler. Like I said, I hope that 1.5 is cheating him real good. Baron Corbin, Mojo, oh god, I'm still surprised. Mojo Raleigh, 
Brazongo, Ty Dillinger, The Revival, Matt Hardy, Goldust, Slater and Rhino, Zack Ryder, Primo Cologne, who still has a job here, Shelton Benjamin, Chad Gable, Aiden English, and Kurt Hawkins. Listen, said it before, this trophy don't mean shit. It looks like a giant piece of cheese. No one has ever benefited off this trophy. No one has ever gone anywhere with this trophy. Hey, Mojo, what has he done in the last year? Ever since he won the trophy. Yeah, he turned here, but other than that, nothing. He's done nothing. Baron Corbin didn't do that much. Cesaro, I thought it was. Nope. Big Show, yeah, Big Show had to win just because. Do I care who wins in this match? No. I, I wouldn't be surprised if people would even watch it. But then again, I heard um, Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler are going to be commentating for this match. I guess that's something, but who really cares? I'm just going to throw a name out there. Um, Matt Hardy? I expect to see a lot of legends return. Or some NXT people get involved in this too. And most of a lot of these names I've named out here is just jobber. Jobbers, really. Primo Cologne, I'm surprised this man still has a, has a job in WWE. I forgot he was here until SmackDown the other night. Everybody else, it's just, it's it's whatever. Who cares? Who cares? I'm just throwing Matt Hardy just because. I'm just throwing out a name. But I, I don't care about this match. That's the pre-show. Uh, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax for the Raw Women's Championship. Another match that has been horribly... Listen, let me say one thing about WrestleMania real quick. The WrestleMania build this year has not been good, okay? A lot of these matches do not feel that built up and probably should have had another week or two to build up because some they've either focused on too much or matches that should have been focused on have not really been built. Even I know people tell me they're not even looking forward to this year's WrestleMania card because they're not really impressed to it. Like, they'll watch some of these matches, but they're not really impressed. I'm only, like, interested in a few of the matches on the WrestleMania card. Bliss versus Nia Jax, I could, I could care less. Everyone says Carmella's going to cash in the money in the bank. I guess that would save it in a way. Because I'll get to the Oscar versus Charlotte thing in a minute. Since Oscar may technically be on SmackDown after she wins. We'll just have to trade Carmella to Raw when she wins the title. If that happens. Listen, I, I, I'd rather see this match go 60 seconds. Nia Jax wins. Who cares? If they go over 10 minutes with this, I don't think nobody could do I would be surprised if the crowd tried to hijack this match. That and... I'd be, I'd be surprised if Bliss even still retained the title. Because they must... I don't know who loves it that much in the back. But this this has gone on long enough. This whole fat shame in high school mean girl thing is retarded. It's, this is stupid. Okay? It's stupid. Would have put the Cruiserweights on the main show. Put that match on the pre-show. Don't care about the women's title match. The Raw one. But I'm just saying, Jax, just... This match needs to be done in 60 seconds. This This is ridiculous at this point. It, it really is. It's just that bad. And no one never really explained why Mickey James ever went heel. So, it's fucking garbage. Uh, next, Sheamus and Cesaro, the bar versus Braun Strowman, Strowman and a mystery partner. Some think Strowman's going to do it on his own. I've threw a few names out there. I've said Elias. I'm sure a lot of people thought that. Big Cass could probably return. Samoa Joe could probably return. Um, I don't think it's going to be Ellsworth. I don't know why people keep saying that. Uh, I've heard the name Bobby Lashley, but I don't even know if he's even signed with WWE. I don't mean he tapes he has left an impact, but I, I, I'm, I'm not really even really had Bobby Lashley's name under my radar through all this. I'm either going with Cass because of return and maybe Elias. I don't know who else. Unless Strowman wins it on his own and beats the bar, but... Uh, the, the, it's a mystery partner. We'll, we'll find out and see, but it's been a lot of names thrown out there. I, I don't think it's going to be Ellsworth. I know people said Ellsworth, but I just don't really think it will be it, James Ellsworth. But, I mean, like, the, the three names I'm really most likely going with is Elias. But then again, he said he's, Elias did say on Monday, we never know what Elias is doing. He's going to put the greatest performance on at WrestleMania. Some people think The Rock's going to come out and do some song with Elias, so I may kind of cross him out. But... I'm still keeping his name in the pool for that match. But then I'm also going with Samoa Joe or the return of Big Cass. Some people don't. Oh, the Big Show. Everybody says the Big Show because he signed a multi-year deal. Or it could be the return of... Uh, this is a one that's kind of... I didn't think also, but... Uh, Dean Ambrose. Could be him. 
But I don't know how long Ambrose' injury is, so I'm just throwing the name out there. But I think it's somewhat being leaning towards Big Show now. A lot of people have said since he signed a multi-year deal. Uh, next, U.S. title on the line. Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode versus Jinder Mahal versus Rusev in a fatal four-way for the U.S. title. And, you know, I heard rumors that um, Rusev asked out of his contract before WrestleMania. Now, if this story is true, then WWE put him in the match because, A, they don't want him to leave, but they know they haven't done nothing with him because they don't like it when you get over on your own. You know, as for Rusev, with the Rusev day, and now, I feel like they may put the title on him, just because they don't want him to leave WWE, because if Rusev says he wants out now of the company, then they probably may try to keep him, that's probably why they put him in this match. I don't think he's going to win the title, and I'm going by from a, someone like, I'm not saying it's 50-50 booking or anything, I may have said that already, but since Rusev had got a clean win on gender on SmackDown the other night, I feel like... Ma Jinder Mahal is going to win. I know I'm sounding crazy for that, but knowing the WWE, I don't know if they'll really cash in on the whole Rusev Day thing. Don't get me wrong, Rusev will be super over as hell. Same way Aiden English rapping or singing him out to the ring for Rusev Day. I'm sure we will hear a massive Rusev, Rusev Day chance. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear a Rusev Day chance throughout the whole night. But, um, I really see, um... I don't think R Rusev is going to win. Like I said, it'd be dope if he wins, but I don't think he will. I don't think Randy Orton will retain. Bobby Roode, I don't think he'll win. And I, I think Bobby Roode needs to turn heel now at this point because it's not working in his face for him. And um, I, I just I just feel like Jinder's going to win. I don't know why. Just just looking from a booking standpoint, knowing them. Rusev got a clean win on Jinder, so I feel like Jinder's going to somehow steal the U.S. title. So don't be surprised if he really does win. I say it'd be dope if Rusev win, but I don't think that's going to happen. Miz versus Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins in a triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship. I don't care who wins as long as they get the belt off of Miz. I don't know where they get this whole longest title reign thing because it's not really true. But I feel like Finn Balor is going to win just because Seth Rollins had got the win over him on Raw. That was a very great match they did Monday. But I'm going with Finn Balor for the win because I feel like he really needs something. Some people think Finn may be going to SmackDown if he doesn't win. Or if Seth Rollins does not win the title, then he will be going to... Um, Smackdown. One of these two be on Smackdown when this whole shakeup thing happens. But I, in my mind right now, I'm I'm putting it on Finn Balor just because Seth got the win on Monday. Um, I feel like Finn Balor is gonna get the the win at Mania. Like I said, 50-50 booking. So Finn's gonna win as long as they get the belt off the Miz. Usos versus New Day versus Bludgeon Brothers and Triple Threat Smackdown for the Smackdown tag titles. They didn't really hype it up in the end before the go home show. Yeah, I I want the Usos to win, just because they finally made on the main card on WrestleMania. Even though some people say the pre show counts as WrestleMania card, the main one, but I feel like they're gonna give this to the Bludgeon Brothers uh, discount war machine. I like Harper, but I know they need Rowan with him because Rowan can't survive on his own. I still think they look like a uh, discount war machine or a bad. Um, henchmen from a comic book or uh, with their Thor hammers and they have a good offense but I, I, I like I said I would like the Usos to win I feel like the New Day is in just because if this was New Day versus Usos they probably would tear it up again but we've seen so many great matches with them it's like they had to end it off somewhere but hey the New Day are in again so at least they have a match now hosting Wrestlemania again this year so I would go with the Usos but I feel like the Bludgeon Brothers are going to take the win Charlotte versus Asuka for the SmackDown Women's title. Some say it's going to be Charlotte. Some say it's going to be Asuka. I think it'll be Asuka because, A, I feel like they want this streak to roll on. And it hasn't been the best build-up. And I've already said it before. They're already on the Mixed Match Challenge. And I kind of told how that's been kind of predictable since they kept saying Asuka's streak was always on the line even if Miz lost. So it kind of made that tournament very predictable early on. Since people kind of knew um, Asuka and Miz were probably going to win the whole thing anyways. And you got a quick preview. Which a lot of people probably didn't watch that Mixed Match Challenge anyways. Right after SmackDown. And knowing Asuka already won. So that's the thing with that. Um, some people think, believe Charlotte will win. And in the streak. I've said it before. I don't think WWE is going to have two Japanese wrestlers win on the same night. That's why in my mind right now, and this could be debatable, 
I think Asuka will win, and I think Nakamura will lose. And I'll get to that match soon enough, but um, I, I feel like that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to let two Japanese wrestlers win. But I'd be surprised if Charlotte was the one to beat the streak. But there's been now rumors saying that Asuka's going to have to win the title, hold it for another year until the next WrestleMania, and Ronda Rousey's going to beat the streak. I, that's, that's a reach right now. That's a big reach. We don't even know if Ron, well, Ron Rousey will probably be at for Mania next year anyways. That depends if she gets better throughout the year. That's the question. Will she be better throughout the next year? So we'll have to find out and see if that, that even happens. But I'm going to go with Asuka on this one. Some people really do believe Charlotte will win. But they everybody's saying they're reaching for this whole WrestleMania 35 Rousey versus um, Asuka to beat the streak. But hey, we'll find out and see. But they have had the best build up. But this will be a great match though. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. If Owens and Zayn win, they will be back on SmackDown. So I feel like they will lose. <laughs> okay, yeah, if they lose, they won't be on SmackDown. They'll just go to Monday Night Raw the night after Mania. So I don't think they're going to have Bryan lose on his first match back. And he will be super duper over, of course. Something Shane is going to turn on him and go heel. I'm really still surprised Shane McMahon is doing this match. Even though they keep saying this whole diverticulitis and hernia at least he's that well enough to go on Sunday if he is ready to kill himself as usual then okay something Daniel Bryan is going to turn heel which that would be the biggest mistake ever most likely because I'm sure the crowd would be shocked but this guy is like the one of the ultimate faces right now in this company okay like super top ultimate face nearly so I believe Daniel and Shane will win some people think Daniel will be in most of the match and Shane will stand on the ringside Hopefully, we see what Daniel Bryan did. The guy, I don't think he's going to change up his move set. As long as he doesn't get hurt again, he'll be okay. At the end of the day, this has happened two times with Daniel Bryan with this whole neck thing. So, let's hope he doesn't get hurt again. I do believe Daniel and Shane will win. And Kevin Owens and Sami will probably um, show up on Raw tomorrow night. Unless they get some type of screwy finish, fuck finish going on. And they'll win. And they'll be back on SmackDown again. And KO Mania 3. But they really have built this match up a lot more. Come on, the feud has been going on for months now. Because we didn't know Daniel's turning heel, Shane's turning heel. And it just got really annoying after six months worth of SmackDown. Because I felt like this feud was dragging along. We didn't know. I don't think they even knew Daniel Brown was even going to wrestle to WrestleMania. Because that was always the plan, where the plan is now. But people didn't even know this was really actually going to happen. Because they said Daniel's turning heel. Or Shane's turning heel. Who's going to be Shane's partner? Who's going to be this partner? Who, who was going to turn on who first for many months? And it's been a really great storyline because it's been really annoying after a while kicking off the show. What's, what's Shane McMahon's reaction this week? The feud has been dragging off, so the payoff has to be from here. Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. I don't know where people keep saying this is going to be the main event. Doubt it. Uh... Yeah, I feel about this thing. I still think it looks silly how she put Stephanie put Ronda through the table and Ronda didn't look like she didn't want to sell it. And this feud itself, those video packages making Stephanie literally like she was the top, like the greatest in ring. Like by God, man, they made her look super strong in that video package. They'll let Rousey get the ring, get the win. I feel like Triple H and Kurt Angle will be in a majority of the match. Some people say Kurt Angle looks like he can't really move, so everyone keeps saying that. Triple H is still in great shape, and he can still go, so we know Triple H can do that. Kurt Angle, from the, the match that I've seen him recently, that would be... I have to agree, he hasn't really done that much. And from the Survivor Series one at TLC, he did like an angle slam and some ankle locks, but... Some people believe, can he really run the ropes? Can everybody say, look, Kurt looks hurt out there. He clearly forgets his lines a lot. And I, I don't know if Kurt Angle's really that hurt. Everyone keeps saying that. But some think Rousey will turn on Kurt Angle or, or something. But I think they're going to let Rousey get, get the win. I, I, I And it's the thing with Rousey. Either A, Rousey will do good in the ring. Or B, she will stink up the joint when this match happens. So it's going to be A or B. She'll she'll do good or she'll stink up the joint because the many weeks they've had Rousey's just kind of been uh, really been I don't even want to say 50-50 and thank god they stopped putting that stuff under her eyes that looked ridiculous but um I'm probably gonna go with Rousey and Kurt AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus for the WWE Championship listen they have not built this matchup good they have not 
They barely have built this match up. They should have been building this for the past couple few months now. They got more down for the past two, three weeks of who's going to get hit who. But I just think they were lying saying it's a dream match. It's a dream match. Listen, this is a match that happened two years ago at Wrestle Kingdom 10, who probably, which was match of the year in New Japan Pro Wrestling. When, it, what was it, Nakamura was the IWGP Intercontinental Champion and AJ was the challenger, but rolls a little bit reversed, except AJ is the champion and Nakamura is the challenger. Some people believe AJ Styles is going to win. I may think AJ Styles is going to win because he's got to get his win back from two years ago from the Tokyo Dome. Because um, Nakamura did win that match a couple of years ago. And they haven't built it up well. They haven't really told the history. We know how WWE's not going to really mention other companies like that. All AJ really said is this ain't the Tokyo Dome. After that, they haven't done a really build. Every, all I've heard was it's a dream match. It's a dream match. Could they steal the show? I hope they do. Is it going to come to comparison like it did in New Japan a few years ago? I don't know. I, I, I hope it's great as the one they did a few years ago. Because people have been wanting this match to happen like forever now. And wanting this thing to go down. With Nakamura and AJ Styles. Listen, Nakamura's main roster one has not been good. And the Royal Rumble win and hopefully winning this title is going to make up for that. For those horrible gender matches that happen. Because they haven't really done Nakamura well ever since he got to the main roster. Okay? NXT, he was great. We already knew he was great in New Japan. But could this be a New Japan style match? Could we let these guys go and hit that strong style since AJ and Nakamura and Nakamura are like... This is one of the best opponents AJ really had. Nakamura has around here because both of them were in New Japan. And the other matches Nakamura's on the main roster, some of them have been good, but they don't come to comparison. The only reason why I'm saying AJ and maybe Finn too, because he's wrestled them in New Japan. We know how great match this has. We know this match was great two years ago in New Japan. It's just in a WWE ring this time. Pretty much the same match, except the roles are reversed. Nakamura's the challenger, AJ is the, the, the champion. Like I said before, do I think two Japanese wrestlers are going to win on the same night? I, I would think it could happen, but I, I don't think they're really going to let this um go. I don't think um they're going to let both of them win on the same night. So that's why I said Oscar's going to win and Nakamura's going to lose. But I could I pick a winner? I, I may try to side with AJ. Just because Nakamura beat him at the Tokyo Dome two years ago. for the And still retain the title. And I think AJ may retain his title. And hopefully this does steal the show. It most likely will steal the show. Uh, John Cena versus The Undertaker. Which they never officially said that match is going to happen. But I'm saying it anyways because I think it will happen. Cena who has called Undertaker Coward for a week. And I don't know Cena's damn near healing this. Saying like hey you may have left your hat in the ring. But you left your balls at, at home too. And... <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen Sunday. Cena's going to be in the crowd as a fan. And somewhere, some way, you're going to hear that gong go off. And Undertaker's going to come out. And either A, I don't think, I don't know, everyone says he's not going to be the dead man. And he's probably going to be the American badass of Big Evil again. It's going to be Biker Taker. And he's going to say, I don't, it would stuff say he should have Monday. Have Taker show up on the screen says, I don't answer to you. You, you, I do this on my time. Not when you tell me you're on your time type of deal. So, some people want to see this match. Some people don't really want to. Could it be a brawl? Yeah, some people think he's just going to come out and challenge Cena. Or he accepts the challenge. Or some people think it's going to be a year-long build-up to next year's WrestleMania. I hope not. Um, or something. But, I don't know. John Cena to me, I feel like he's he really did. John Cena's done his best to get this match hyped up. On his own, without really even having an, an opponent for this. He has hyped this match up for weeks and my leg is asleep and it really hurts so give me a second but this match he has built it up for weeks he has hyped it up he has had the crowd really invested into this calling out the dead man but will it happen this Sunday we'll just have to find out and see if Undertaker comes out this Sunday will he be the dead man will he be the biker one I don't know what Undertake, which Undertaker is going to show up this Sunday, but they never really officially announced it, but we'll just find out Sunday at WrestleMania then if the Undertaker versus John Cena is going to happen. Or some say it's a swerve, but Cena will be in that crowd sitting as a fan. And he will have his ticket, and he'll probably be front row the whole night until something happens with this whole dead man thing. So, 
we'll find out. And, and I guess, which they pretty much now, I guess it's confirmed, I believe, is the main event of WrestleMania. A match that has been known literally for, all, for literally a year now. And Dana White, UFC, who pretty pretty much gave it away now, it looks like. Since he says Brock is coming back to UFC, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. This is going to look like Goldberg versus Brock at WrestleMania 20. Because we know Brock is on his way out of here after this, okay? Dana White pretty much says he's coming back to UFC. This probably be, literally maybe the last time we see Brock. Like, number one, thank God they're getting a title off this guy, number one. It, it's about freaking time. Unless he signed a contract with WWE again, I'm not really sure. But, um, Dana White pretty much says Brock is coming back. So, I wouldn't be surprised if this match gets hijacked and people boo this out of the freaking building and... It, like it's gonna look like Goldberg versus Brock. This you, this is gonna be so much hijacking. Botchamania is gonna have a lot of material for this, but I, I will not be surprised if this this show, this match gets hijacked. Listen, we know Roman is gonna win. At least he was actually cheered on Monday, and they really did do their best to build this much up as possible to make Roman look like a sympathetic babyface. But it's not working. I mean, what is this? The fourth, fifth time Roman is gonna main event WrestleMania? Jesus Christ! How? They they say they just love Roman man. Vince Vince loves him. He must really do. And he this is the ultimate showdown for this. It's it's gonna be Ultra Instinct Roman versus um I can't believe I'm saying that, um Um Jiren Lesnar there. It's, it's Jiren versus Goku. I feel like they're gonna make him Ultra Instinct somehow. Oh god, this 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 main event, man, but Finally, they will get the title off Brock, and we, we know who's going to win, okay? We all know. This is just predictable as hell. I'd be surprised if Brock would win. It's not no cash in this year. This ain't WrestleMania 31, which some people think Carmella will probably do this Sunday. I mean, pulling off another WrestleMania 31 spot like Seth did a few years ago. But Brock and Roman, Roman's going to win. Yeah, it'll be a brawl out there, of course. And I know Brock is one with one F five. I'm sure Roman's gonna win with one spear, and Brock's gonna kick out. I mean, Roman's gonna kick out at first F five. He's gonna win with one spear. But yeah, Brock's nine times out of ten, pretty much he's on his way out the door. Drops the title. Roman wins. What do they do with Paul Heyman after this? I don't know. What do they turn Roman heel? Uh, doubt that they've had every other chance to turn him heel. You had a perfect chance to turn him heel last year when he beat the Undertaker. You've had several chances to turn him heel when they had the chance, but they haven't. What are they going to do? Are they going to throw Paul with Brock? I mean, with Roman? I don't know. Are they going to throw Heyman with somebody else? Maybe some say they could throw him with Nakamura because Nakamura needs a mouthpiece. I don't know what Paul Heyman will do after this, okay, once Brock is gone. Unless he goes with him and he leaves too. But who would they put Paul Heyman with? I don't know. And they put Paul Heyman with people in the past, but it's never really worked out. They tried it with Cesaro. They tried it with Curtis Axel. CM Punk would never really need him because CM Punk could talk on his own. But I just like both of them as a team for some reason anyways because they both really could talk. But Punk never really needed him. Um, we'll, we'll see if Paul Heyman gets a new client and stuff because they did it before. And, you know, Paul did have multiple clients though at the time when they put him with Heyman. And, you know, like I said, they, they had Cesaro at a point in time. They had a... Uh, they had Curtis Axel, but that didn't get over. Right back, yeah, whatever. That didn't really get over at all. So I think they just kind of just got to the point where we're just gonna put him with Brock Lesnar because it's the only thing that works. But hey, will we put Paul Heyman with someone else? I don't know. But I'm getting this prediction video off off here. It's gonna be a long night. I'm just, like I said, I'm debating on NXT Takeover and Ring of Honor, Supercard of Honor. That's gonna be big. WrestleMania, the marathon show that it is, is gonna be very long on Sunday from like four to like what 10 11 o'clock p.m calling the hall of fame was super long last night so yeah but i am out of here i will see you guys later peace out um it's it's gonna be big hopefully we come with live reactions i'm gonna need a lot of space for this but yeah i am out of here i will see you guys later see you later on tonight